Hey guys, welcome back to Manigoro Custom Guitars. And this is CNC Guitar Build Season 2, where I show you my process from design to manufacturing an electric guitar on my CNC. Now, today I'm going to talk to you about the custom 12th fret inlay, which I did on the fretboard. As you will know, this guitar is called Odin 7. 7 because it's a 7 stringer and Odin because I found it's quite a cool name for a guitar. You all know Odin is a legendary Norse uh, god and in order to keep with the same theme of Odin I decided to go with Odin's eye for the 12th fret inlay. Now legend says that Odin gave one of his eyes in order to obtain cosmic knowledge. Yeah, just like I did with my finger, so I can learn how to play guitar. But that didn't really work well. Okay guys, so let's roll the intro, and then we can go on Fusion, and I'll show you my secrets for doing inlay work on my CNC. Hey guys, welcome to my desk. And in front of you, you're looking at the image that I used uh, mostly as a reference for my 12th inlay. I said I used as a reference because it's not exactly like the image as you see. Because I had to adapt it to make it as a physical inlay. So the steps that I did in order to get this image to work it as an inlay. So first of all, I did save it. So I'll have a copy for myself and then I go to this website that I can convert images and this is another project I did. So what I do, I want to convert that JPG into an SVG file so that Fusion 360 can recognize it as, a, as an SVG. So what I do, I just upload the image to SVG and hit convert. Download. And then I can go into Fusion, create a sketch. Insert SVG. This is the one. And here you can see that the image is converted in SVG and I can work with it. Now, obviously, all these lines are not integrated into the inlay. It was, it would be cool to make it kind of even engrave it, but it won't work for my purpose. So just before I move this design onto the fretboard, what I did, I just remove some unwanted stuff. For example, this, that one, this star, and most of the stuff inside the actual image until I end up, I ended up with something like this. As you can see, this is the silhouette of the crow. As you can see, I use this profile here. And this is the lower one. And the inner eye, I like to call it, I did uh, this drawing, I redid it as an actual drawing instead of using this part because what happened when I scaled down this image to fit onto the fretboard the circle of the eye and, and, this, and this design was really really bad so now that I have the design centered between the frets in the middle of the fretboard it's time to extrude the image so I can mill down <clears throat> the pocket. Now, 
I want to turn off the sketches. When doing <clears throat> this kind of job, if you have quite a big inlay to do, it is important to, to take in consideration the thickness of the inlay material. What I mean is that in the center of the fretboard, if you, for example, uh, let me show you, this pocket here is 1.693 millimeter deep. Whether the further outside of the fretboard I'll go, the pocket is 1.377 millimeter, so it, it is much shallower here. And that you need to take in consideration. You don't just extrude the whole design, for example, 1.5 mil, and expecting to have uh, a uniform thickness all around the inlay. In fact, these designs, I had to uh, extrude them further down than this one, just to have an appropriate depth for the thickness of the material that I was going to use, well, that I used. Regarding tool pads, what I did, first I went down with a 0.8 millimeter bit along the profile of the whole inlay, then I went with a 3 millimeter bit to remove most of the material, staying away from the edge since I removed already, since I cut already the edge with the 0.8 millimeter, and then I went with a 0 0.5 removing, it's a rest machine in comparison as well, removing uh, the remaining material that the 0 0.8 millimeter bit didn't remove. Now for the inlay material, what I did, I moved everything up here, so I can machine every piece individually. And as you can see here, I left some space, a gap, this is where the frets slot is going through. Now the real secret for a good inlay job on a CNC is that the inlay material, in this case my abalone, this pieces, has to be slightly smaller than the actual pocket. So what I do, I'll machine the pocket as is, and then these small uh, pieces, I machine them um, roughly between 0 0.05 or 0 0.06 millimeter smaller. In fact, if I take this upper part, which is this piece, you can see that I leave a negative 0 0.06 millimeter. So what I do in this talk to leave option, instead of leaving a positive uh, number, I'll do a negative number, in this case it's minus 0 0.06. And like this, it will remove that amount extra from the whole uh, blank. And like this, the bit will fit nicely into the pocket, or else it won't really fit well. I, actually, it won't fit at all. So, since I have small blanks of a baloney, I machine them 
individually. So I went with the center I, the upper part, lower part, upper beak, lower beak, the lower tail. Now the lower tail is here because I had to turn it. So I'll have the right orientation of my Y and X axis because the blank that I had was a rectangular. These are all profiles operation. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm using a 0.8 millimeter bit. But for the center I obviously the inner circle I started using the 0.8, but then I finished using the 0.5, removing the rest of the material that the previous bit didn't remove. So guys, that's it for today. I hope you liked it, enjoyed it, and learned something from it. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section down below. I will do my best to answer them in the next episode. If you're new to my channel and you're enjoying my content, please I invite you to consider subscribing to my channel and hit that notification bell so you'll be aware about my future releases. And to the new subscribers and to the old ones, take care and goodbye.